So I want to ask you, obviously, about these protests. The regime has gone to great lengths to suppress these protests. And we seem to see in Iran headline-grabbing demonstrations about every decade or so. Why do you think that they continue to fail to bring about real change? For the simple nature of the regime. Uh, we look at them as an occupying force that has taken our country hostage and is trying to export an ideology only in interest of the regime's survival with no care whatsoever for the people and their plight. And as you can see, people today are at the point of uh, being completely uh, fed up with the system and are now questioning uh, the reason for its uh, um, still being in position of power. Um, in its totality. It's no longer a question of elections. It's no longer a question of reform. It's a question of putting an end to this regime. So how do you create change in a regime that's not actually accountable to its people in the first place? Well, obviously, uh, people have to uh, resist and uh, mount campaigns of demonstrations and civil disobedience and ultimately force the regime to retreat in a point of collapse. Naturally, uh, in such movement, and we've seen many of them uh, throughout the world that uh, ultimately ended uh, the totalitarian or authoritarian regimes that they had to face, there has been some degree of international support as well, which makes the task easier, and therefore they don't feel uh, in total isolation and uh, unhelped or uh, you know, unheeded. This is what the people of Iran today expect the world to be on their side and support them in their desire for freedom and liberty. Mr. Pallavi, we've seen footage of some of the protesters calling out your name, chanting out for you. What is your message specifically for those demonstrators? Well, it's, it's very important to realize that today's generation of young Iranians have done their due diligence and uh, in-depth research of why is it that the country today is in this shape. They have heard it from their parents, that I even heard it from revolutionaries, many of whom feel sorry about the fact that they did, in fact, uh, participate in a revolution uh, back in 1979. And today's youth remember where the country was headed, what my grandfather did, what my father did for our country's progress uh, and modernization, <coughs> secularization, and what have you. So there's a value in terms of the path our country was taking at the time before the revolution, and we should be today uh, South Korea as opposed to North Korea. And all of the opportunities that the youth seek today, freedom, liberty, opportunity to find jobs, to work, to make a living, to not be in such dire economic situation, is all pending upon a serious change of the political system that we have in the country. They are revolting against it. They agree with the message that I've been giving them all along, that we need to have a secular parliamentary democracy. And Iran is today a country that has survived the 40 years of uh, theocratic dictatorship. The last time it was seen was during the Inquisition in Europe, in the medieval times. Today we have an Islamic Inquisition going on in Iran, and people understand why it is that we cannot have true freedom and democracy as long as uh, there's a religious ideology ruling. We need a secular system where there's a clear separation of religion from state, and that's the only time Iran will be able to be back on the path of freedom and uh, progress. And stay right here. This interview continues on that. In the past, one of the ways you have said that that should be done is through Western backing. I'm curious now that we are nearly a year into the Trump administration, and we've seen just over the course of the last week and a half or so how President Trump has reacted, namely via Twitter with scathing attacks on the regime. What do you think of how he has dealt with this round of protests? Uh, I think that the general support so far uh, demonstrated by the Trump administration has been received positively by my compatriots. However, I think that as we look at the practical steps to be taken to actually be of help to a nation, there are more steps that can be taken. As you know, communication is vital for people to be able to organize themselves. As you know, the regime has tried, as always, to try to repress information, to censor co communication, to slow down the internet, the, to uh, create all sorts of filters so people cannot connect to platforms such as Instagram or Telegram and what have you. Uh, there's a lot of technological assistance that can be done. Some of them are barred as a reason of the policy of sanctions that makes some companies, for example, Google, that can provide the kind of access uh, to, to, uh, to be clarified as to whether or not they're violating sanctions by doing something in that direction or not. There are some specific steps that, uh, that uh, this administration can take. But beyond that, and in a general sense, 
Republicans. I think uh, leaders of democratic countries have to understand that dialogue has to be established at some point with representative of the people who demand democratic change. You're not going to be able to find all the answers by limiting your access only to the regime and its representatives. That's a very critical issue at this stage. So I want to take that a step further. Back in May, when you and I spoke, you mentioned that you would like the United States to play an active role in regime change. Do you still stand by that? And if so, what would you like to see happen? I don't think any foreign government should advocate a policy of regime change. But if they take the position that we support the Iranian people in their desire for freedom to be at their hand determining the future that they deserve, it's basically supporting uh, a democratic call uh, of another nation as uh, democracies. And therefore, um, the process itself will lead to a change of regime. But that's the decision that the Iranian people want to make and are making. But they want the world to take a position. Are you going to be with us this time? Are you going to still uh, throw us under the bus and continue maintaining the status quo by talking only to this regime. If this process changed, the paradigm will change and it will lead to regime change, not as a result of the foreign policy of a foreign government, but as a result of the people on the streets ultimately reaching what they are demanding with the support and backing of the international community, particularly uh, democracies. Mr. Pallavi, I don't know if you've seen it, but there was a harsh personal attack against you put on social media, I believe, by the Iranian ambassador to the U.K. Uh, do you think the uh, regime in Tehran perhaps is starting to see you as something of, of a threat? And are you concerned about that? Well, of course, you know, <laughs> it's not the first time the regime uh, will uh, react to anyone that they consider as, as a threat. And of course, I think that by virtue of the fact that in the uh, last few days, the specific focus has been on me, certainly the threat level is elevated. But that's part of uh, in the nature of uh, what we are doing. You know, it's a struggle that involves uh, taking all the risks necessary to, to, to be able to be of help. And I've always, uh, the story of my life has been to be a very visible target target for the regime, and, you know, that's part of <laughs> what we need to do to save our country. Uh, I'm prepared to sacrifice my life if necessary, but at the same time, I'm prudent. At the same time, I'm smart about this, and I think a lot of Iranians are also smart about that. And we, we are not going to be impeded or in any form or shape intimidated by the regime's uh, attacks or, or, or threats. Uh, and in fact, the more they do that, the more it invigorates us to, to stand up and fight until we finally succeed and uh, claim our country back. Before we let you go, I want to broaden the picture for a minute, because besides Iran uh, trying to suppress those protests over the last week and a half, there is, of course, the nuclear deal. Iran just today warning the international community that President Trump could back out from the nuclear deal altogether. The next deadline is this week on January 11th. Do you think that the Trump's uh, administration's approach so far, uh, a hard line against Iran, decertifying the deal, has emboldened hardliners in Iran or done the opposite? Look, uh, I think everybody has to understand that the nuclear issue is just one aspect of the overall picture as it relates to the Iranian regime. I believe that today, if you're talking about whether or not this would lead to further sanctions, it should not revolve around simply the nuclear deal. It has to revolve also for the violation of human rights. It has to also involve the fact that this regime has systematically uh, wanted to interfere in affairs of other countries, from uh, Syria to Yemen, etc. It is not just the nuclear issue that should be subject to, uh, to, to uh, uh, any consideration of further sanctions or what is the overall behavior and attitude that this regime has on that scale as well. And therefore, I think that this should not be only limited to, to the subject. Uh, very briefly, should he withdraw altogether from the nuclear deal? My position was at the time the deal was uh, proposed that it's better to have a deal than no deal whatsoever, to not to escalate this thing to a military confrontation, which to me has always been a lose-lose proposition. On the other hand, uh, uh, the criticism we had about that deal was because 
there was no guarantee that if any funds are released, first of all, what is going to end up uh, serving, and as we always imagine uh, to be the case, the regime is not going to spend it on the betterment of lives of the Iranian people. It's going to spend it and continue its uh, uh, proxy wars, whether it's in Syria or backing Hezbollah or everything else that is traditionally being doing. And the net result is that the regime has had uh, some uh, respite, given the harsh economic situation that Iran is facing, by having access to more money that they uh, obtained over the last few months that have utilized uh, uh, towards their own sustenance, as opposed to uh, affecting a betterment of the situation for the Iranian people. So net-net, uh, I don't know what is the final benefit that this deal is going to provide in terms of it being in the interest of the people of Iran, or for that matter, the rest of the world. At some point, we need to figure that as long as this regime is in Iran, none of the problems we are facing are going to disappear. And once this regime is gone, all of these major problems will disappear overnight, whether it's terrorism, whether it's radicalism, whether it's the nuclear threat, all of these will dis disappear once this regime is gone.